Good day, future lawyers. This video is an audiovisual presentation of principles and recent jurisprudence in everyone's favorite subject, criminal law. All right, so I hope everyone had a wonderful holidays and happy new year to all. May this be our best year ever. Now let's begin. Plea bargaining in criminal cases. Plea bargaining is procedural. The Supreme Court in the recent case of Estepona v. Lubrigo declared Section 23 of Republic Act No. 9165 as unconstitutional. The power to promulgate rules of pleading, practice, and procedure is now the exclusive domain of the Supreme Court and no longer shared with the executive and legislative departments. Plea bargaining is allowed during the arraignment, pre-trial, or even up to the point when the prosecution already rested its case. Yet, a defendant has no constitutional right to plea bargain. No basic right are infringed by trying him rather than accepting a plea of guilty. The prosecutor need not do so if he prefers to go to trial. Under the present rules, the acceptance of an offer to plead guilty is not a demandable right but depends on the consent of the offended party and the prosecutor, which is a condition precedent to a valid plea of guilty to a lesser offense that is necessarily included in the offense charged. The reason for this is that the prosecutor has full control of the prosecution for criminal actions. His duty is to always prosecute the proper offense not any lesser or graver one based on what the evidence on hand can sustain. The plea is a further address to the sound discretion of the trial court which may allow the accused to plead guilty to a lesser offense which is necessarily included in the offense charged. Child Abuse under Republic Act No. 7-610 the Supreme Court ruled in Bungalan v. People, not every instance of the laying of hands on a child constitutes the crime of child abuse under Section 10, Paragraph A of Republic Act No. 7-610. Only when the laying of hands is shown beyond reasonable doubt to be intended by the accused to debase, degrade, or demean the intrinsic worth and dignity of the child as a human being should it be punished as child abuse. Otherwise, it is punished under the re revised penal code. Bail protects the right of the accused to due process and to be presumed innocent. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved. The presumption of innocence is rooted in the guarantee of due process and is safeguarded by the constitutional right to be released on bail and further binds the court to wait until after trial to impose any punishment on the accused. The decision whether to detain or release an accused before and during trial is ultimately an incident of judicial power to hear and determine his criminal case. The strength of the prosecution's case, albeit a good measure of the accused's propensity for flight or for causing harm to the public, is subsidiary to the primary objective of bail, which is to ensure that the accused appears at trial. Juan Ponce Enrile was charged with plunder, and the Sandigan Bayan denied his motion to fix bail and his motion for reconsideration. Delarama versus the People Courts said that unless allowance of bail is forbidden by law in the particular case, the illness of the prisoner 
independently of the merits of the case is a circumstance and the humanity of the law makes it a consideration which should, regardless of the charge and the stage of the proceeding, influence the court to exercise its discretion to admit the pr prisoner to bail. It is relevant to observe that granting provisional liberty to Enrile will then enable him to have his medical condition be properly addressed and better attended to by competent physicians in the hospitals of his choice. This will not only aid in the adequate preparation of his defense, but more importantly will guarantee his appearance in the court for the trial. Political Offense Doctrine When the political offense doctrine is asserted as a defense in the trial court, it becomes crucial for the court to determine whether the act of killing was done in furtherance of a political end and for the political motive of the act to be cons conclusively demonstrated. Under the political offense doctrine, common crimes perpetrated in furtherance of a political offense are divested of their character as common offenses and assume the political complexion of the main crime of which they are mere ingredients and, consequently, cannot be punished separately from the principal offense or complexed with the same to justify the imposition of a graver penalty. Thus, when a killing is committed in furtherance of rebellion, the killing is not homicide or murder. Rather, the killing assumes the political complexion of rebellion as its mere ingredient and must be prosecuted and punished as rebellion alone. We had already ruled that the burden of demonstrating political motivation must be discharged by the defense since motive is a state of mind which only the accused knows. Ocampo v. Abando, February 11, 2014 Next, Probation Law under Presidential Decree No. 968 as amended by Republic Act No. 10707. Who cannot avail of the benefits of probation? Section 2. Section 9 of the same decree as amended is hereby further amended to read as follows. Section 9. Disqualified Offenders. The benefits of this decree shall not be extended to those e. sentenced to serve a maximum term of imprisonment of more than six years, b. convicted of any crime against the national security, c. who have previously been convicted by final judgment of an offense punished by imprisonment of more than six months and one day, and or or a fine of more than 1,000 pesos. D. Who have been once on probation under the provisions of this decree and E. Who are already serving sentence at the time the substantive provisions of this decree became applicable pursuant to section 33 hereof. Next, the application of the indeterminate sentence law. The court shall sentence the accused to an indeterminate sentence, the maximum term of which shall be that which, in view of the attending circumstances, could be properly imposed under the rules of the revised penal code and the minimum of which shall be within the range of the penalty next lower to that prescribed by the code for the offense, and, if the offense is punished by any other law, a special law for example, the court shall sentence the accused to an indeterminate sentence, the maximum term of which shall not exceed the maximum fixed by said law, and the minimum shall not be less than the minimum term prescribed by the same. 
the court must, instead of a single fixed penalty, except where the imposable penalty is one year or less, determine two penalties referred to in the indeterminate sentence law as the maximum and the minimum terms. Malfeasance, misfeasance, and nonfeasance. Malfeasance is the doing of an act which a person ought not to do at all. Misfeasance is the improper doing of an act which a person may or might lawfully do. And nonfeasance is the omission of an act which a person ought to do. Article 247 Death or physical injuries inflicted under exceptional circumstances. The requisites of Article 247 are 1. A legally married person surprises his spouse in the act of committing sexual intercourse with another person. 2. He or she kills any or both of them or inflicts upon any or both of them any serious physical injury while in the act or immediately thereafter, and three, he has not promoted or facilitated the prostitution of his wife, or that he or she has not consented to the infidelity of the other spouse. In People v. Gonzalez, the Supreme Court held that to avail the privilege under Article 247, the accused should surprise his wife in the very act of sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse generally presupposes the penetration of the man's sexual organ into that of a woman's. Violation of Section 3, Paragraph E of Republic Act Number 3019 or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act has the following elements. 1. The accused is a public officer discharging administrative, judicial, or official functions. 2. He must have acted with manifest partiality, evident bad faith, or gross inexcusable negligence. And 3. His action caused any undue injury to any party including the government or gave the private party unwarranted benefits advantage or preference in the discharge of his functions republic act number 8049 the anti-hazing law is malum prohibitum thus existence of criminal intent is immaterial under Section 12 of Republic Act No. 11053 or the Anti-Hazing Law of 2018, the defense that the recruit, neophyte, or applicant consented to being subjected to hazing shall not be available to persons prosecuted under this Act. It is likewise stated that any person charged under said law shall not be entitled to the mitigating circumstance that there was no intention to commit so grave a wrong. The elements of falsification of public documents under Article 171 of the Revised Penal Code are that the offender is a public officer, employee, or notary public, two, that he takes advantage of his official position, three, that he falsifies a document by causing it to appear that persons have participated in any act or proceeding, four, that such person or persons did not in fact so participate in the proceeding. The falsification of a public, official, or commercial document may be a means of committing estafa because before the falsified document is actually utilized to defraud another, the crime of falsification has already been consummated, damage or intent to cause damage not being an element of the crime of falsification of public, official, or commercial document. 
In other words, the crime of falsification has already existed. Domingo versus People, October 12, 2009. And that is it for part one. Yes, this is only part one, so stay tuned for part two. Thank you so much for your support. Bye!